All right, here it goes right here in Numbers chapter 24. Numbers chapter 24, we begin that, we're going to begin at verse 15, where Balaam, this is the prophecy from Peor, and it's the, of the messianic kingdom. This is what is so important about this new millennium teaching and the, this new millennium. And understanding the new millennium, the ancient of days, and the connection with the Moshiach, the connection with the king of kings, because it all concerns the messianic kingdom. The messianic kingdom. Now the messianic, the messianic kingdom. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam, or Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, and he hath said, which heard the words of Elohim and knew the knowledge of the Most High of El Elyon, and saw the vision of El Shaddai, the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. This is this is some heavy stuff right here. Balaam, this is what Balaam was going through. He fell into a trance, but now he heard the words of Elohim, and he knew the knowledge of El Elyon, and he saw the vision, the Ra'i, of El Shaddai, of Hulun Chayamlan. And he fell into a trance, but having his eyes open. Verse 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh, not near, not, not not right here, not this time. There shall come a star. You over know, that? Was the star David always called the star David, or was it called something else? Here we're going to find the answer in verse 17 of Numbers chapter 24. There shall come a star out of Yaakov. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter. Remember, we touched on the scepter with black nobility. We touched on the scepter earlier. You have to get that video and get the expanded audio teaching. You understand? On that particular subject matter of the black nobility and the, 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 the scepter. And saying how the scepter was returned to the king of kings. So it says, a star shall rise out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Shall rise out of Israel. Now the connection, Solomon, the queen of Sheba, the Azariah, the priest, you understand, the son of Zadok, Yovah, the 12,000, 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand, that was the kingdom, that was a stone that wasn't cut by human hands, you understand, but it was by the will of the Almighty. So the kingdom of David was renewed in Ethiopia, but that was a small remnant, that was a stone out of a mountain. Israel was still on the scene at that time. Solomon, the queen of Sheba, and the only son, Minulik, you understand, and the 12,000, and Azarias, and, 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 the, and the children of the priesthood that also came into Ethiopia to renew the kingdom of David, the kingdom of Dawi. This is the link. The star that came out of Jacob and the scepter that rose out of Israel, and check this out, and shall smite the corners of Moab. Now remember, Moab was a relative and a relation, you understand? Who was a nephew of, of Abraham, Moab, Yovas, and, 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 and Lot, well, well Lot actually was the nephew's son, but actually was his son by incest, Lot. You understand? And his daughters after Sodom and Gomorrah, and he slept with his daughters, and one bore Moab, Yovastan and Ammon. So you have Moab, and this is now Moab, who's supposed to be a relative. Overstand, this is supposed to be a relative, having Abraham as a relative, but just because they're, you know, your color, they may not be your kind. Even though they may be so called blood, you understand? They may not be life, if you understand that. So th these are things that we need to understand. So the star right here is a star out of Jacob. So it's actually like Jacob's star or the star out of Jacob. So the star of David previously, you understand, was known according to Numbers chapter 24, verse 17, as the star out of Jacob. And that's connected with the scepter that would rise out of Israel and smite the corners of Moab. Not smite Moab, check that out, but smite the corners of Moab. 
and destroy all the children of Sheth. The children of Sheth. Sheth, right there in your Bible. Who are the children of Sheth? Stay tuned. It's going to be very interesting when we touch on the children of Sheth. You understand? Y'all willing touch on the teaching of the children of Sheth. Because some will say it's Seth in the Bible. Even though there's a similarity in the names. You understand? From a, a unlearned perspective. But from a truly metaphysician perspective. As well as linguistic perspective. With the scriptural etymology being led by the Holy Spirit. You begin to see the understanding of who are the children of Sheth. Who would be destroyed by this star and this scepter. And Edom shall be a possession. Edom, the Edomites shall be a possession. They shall be owned. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do violently. Val valiantly. Valiantly. They shall do like, like Behaya, like heroically. Like the Giborim, they should do like wonders. Israel, you understand? The once lost but now found Beta Israel in these last days will do valiantly. You understand? Or are going to do valiantly. Out of Yaiko, out of Yaiko, which is Jacob, shall come he that shall have dominion, that shall have the Gizad. Kedamawi Hala Selassie Nagus Neges has the Gizad coming out of Ya'ikob and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And, you know, we could we could go into this with Addis Ababa, the revolution, what has happened, and even what is still happening. You understand that remain of the city. You understand? Because when you see that day and an hour, it goes to the mountains. Go to the go to the mountains. You understand? Like the Bahitawi. Yovas. But anyway, we'll touch on that more hopefully later on as well. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable. This is Belam, and it says Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. And he looked on the Kenites. These are all nations and peoples we need to understand in the scripture, because these are peoples and nations who are in the same metaphysical spirit, and some of them are blood descendants of these same nations this very day, and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted until Asher shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? He said, Alas, he saw the vision, the Rai, but it was a long way off because Yahweh caused him to see. So the very same Obia soothsayer, you understand, who comes to curse us as Ethiopian Hebrews, you understand, in the anointed overstanding, you understand, in the, in the anointed consciousness and mind of this scripture. You recognize that they can come and to curse. They can be paid off by a black to curse, but they're going to have to bless. So we have to keep that alignment. But it's very interesting because even though they were in that alignment at that time, you'll see what Balaam is in and what was done to cause them to be curse worthy because it wasn't worthy of the curse was to take them out of you know, the, 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 the way. To take them out of that relation, that covenant relation with Yahweh Eloheinu. To take them out of that. To give them distraction. Almost the same thing when you read this. It's so interesting to give them girls. To give them dance. To give them alcohol. To give them clubs and parties. That's what they, you know, they club them to death. Spiritually and metaphysically. And then they were able to really club them to death. And we came down into this. So it's interesting that at first, Balaam was not able to curse them. You understand? But what they would do is undermine their morality, like has happened to black folks in America since the 60s and everything, undermine their morality. You understand? Give them a whole bunch of, of mixed up ideas and, and philosophies and man-made opinions and a whole bunch of other stuff. And you just, now they're able to be cursed because they don't have that divine protection. You understand? They don't have the divine protection. To conclude this chapter in the ship's shall come from the coast of Kittim. 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 You know what the coast of Kittim is? That's linked with Hittites. And Hittites is Turkey. 
You know what I'm saying? The Turks, the Ottoman Turks. You understand? Know and shall afflict Asher. The Ottoman Turks are the worst of the Muslims, so called. These are where the pale, the pale Muslims come into the picture. You understand? Know but unfortunately, they were able to bribe off a lot of them, even the Somalians. When you go back to Ahmed Grain and that history, they don't want to deal with it. That's a reality. You understand? Know Remember what your Prophet Muhammad said. You're fighting against Ethiopia. You shouldn't be fighting against Ethiopia. You should be fighting for Ethiopia. You understand? And for the king of kings of Ethiopia. The Overs, because those people who, who run your religion, the PL so-called Arabs, are not your friends. But you don't know who you are. You don't know yourself. And shall afflict Asher. And shall afflict Eber. And he also shall perish forever. So even though this one will afflict the Turks, the Ottoman, they're going to perish forever. They afflict the Asher, right? They afflict the Osirians, you know what I'm saying? The Egyptians on that level.